Okay. We'll go ahead and call to order the Kodiak Island Borough Assembly special meeting of Tuesday, November 26th at noon on 2024. Roll call, please. Mr. Ames? Here. Mr. Griffin? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Ledoux? Here. Mr. Sherritt? Here. Mr. Smiley? Here. Mr. Whiteside? Mayor Art? Here. You have a quorum. Okay. Any motion? Move on to citizens' comments. We have the uh, local phone number is area code 907-486-3231. Toll-free number is 855-492-9202. Um, sign in, state your name for the record. Turn on the microphone before speaking. Address all remarks to the assembly as a body and not to any member thereof. If calling in, please turn off any listening devices to prevent feedback. Seema. Good afternoon. My name is Seema Groot. I'm the assessor for the Kodiak Island Borough. We are just wanting everyone to know if you are a returning senior, your form that we sent out is incorrect. On the bottom, it has the that you need to qualify for the 2024 PFD, and it should have said the 2025 PFD. We are not sending out corrections. If you're bringing in your um, application or we see you, we tell you, but if you're mailing in, um, we are accepting forms, but we just ev want everybody to know that you have to qualify for the 2025 permanent fund, not the 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Seema. Anyone else wishing to come forward, please do so at this time. Do we have any phone calls? No phone calls. With that, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, consideration of matters in the call for the special meeting. It's regarding approval of a change order number two to contract number FY 2025-22, Baylor 4 overlay replacement by Ram Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $10,203.70. Jared. Move to authorize the borough manager to approve change order number two to contract number FY 2025-22 Baylor floor overlay replacement by Ram Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $10,203.70. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Staff report, Amy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The reason we've asked you here today, and thank you for coming at such a strange time, is twofold. One, to approve the change order, which at face value may seem like it would be a no-brainer for me to sign it and move forward. But while you're here, we're going to give you the update, and uh, Dave's going to walk you through the slideshow and show you what's going on at the Baylor floor. And the second is to address uh, the code that has to do with the manager's authority um, throughout change order. So in your packet today, you're going to have the staff report that we gave on September 5th, the information around the first and second change orders, the code of section I'd uh, like to ask you to look at, and we included a percent breakdown of the first and second change orders. Also, um, in your handout, you have an opinion that I got from the lawyer. Um, back in fiscal year 2019, when um, then assembly member Arndt was going to change this section of code, you have what that looked like. Um, that did go through four versions before it got passed, so there's been some changes, but I think that gives some important history on why that was changed. And then we went into code for some other Alaskan communities and found some sections of code that um, might be worth looking at as we're going to update our current code. So. Um, the site conditions that we found out at the Baylor were not what we expected, which have led to this second change order, and Dave's going to walk us through that um, and show you what the Baylor floor looks like today. So this is our beginning demo. First of all, um, we're talking about, um, I believe it's, I thought it was a seven, yeah, I don't remember. It's like a 30 by 40 uh, area, 1,300 square feet total. So this has been done in the past, and we believe that this, we thought this was like the third iteration of the wear floor, and it's called the wear floor for a reason. 
Uh, you're abrading it constantly by putting, pushing trash over it. Um, the previous application was an epoxy base and in my opinion, and it's strictly my opinion, I don't believe it was mixed properly. When a 50 pound bag calls for 1.2 gallons of water, you would normally measure that, not stand there with a hose and go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, which is the way the floor was put in, quite frankly. So what happened as we were digging through this, you can see on the, on the left hand side, they started to try, attempt to take the top four and a half inches. So they ran a, uh, a diamond saw across this, they cut it. And on the right hand side, what ends up is you're about five inches. And when we got to that level, we ended up with a very unconsolidated, what we believe might have been a lightweight concrete uh, that had fortifier in it. And Scott was out at the site uh, and took a look at this. And it seemed the more that we got into it, the more we found that was not adequate and no longer, it wasn't structural is what it came down to. So this whole thing is 17 inches thick. Let's start, let's go back and say that there's a nine inch structural floor underneath the floor that we're working on. So what's very strange, and it's in here further. So I'm just gonna go through this. Here's your demo. Um, you can see there is rebar within the top couple of inches. Uh, the structural slab itself has the rebar at the bottom of the slab because it is a compression slab, not a tension slab. So consequently, the top layers of slab are different. And if you ever go into the barrel building, you're going to notice that there's about a four inch step in the front door. Apparently, according to the plans, there was a four inch curb around the entire perimeter of the baler floor. And that at some point in history was actually poured thicker and that's why there's a stair there and we don't know why that was increased so these guys worked at this so these are this photo is showing the grid so the those metal bars that are in there were actually i-beams so you poured on top of those and that was your wear indicator that when your concrete got down to those i-beams you needed to put a new wear layer well, we wore through the top layer of the I-beam. So you wore through half inch or better of steel and we're down into these, uh, these areas. And if it's really hard to see, but there's actual holes in here that they, at some point during a repair, drilled these steel beams and put rebar um, perpendicular to it for some additional strength. Here's that offset that I'm talking about. So this is the front door looking in the front door and we have no record of when that was poured. We have no idea when that was raised. So we did do core samples. We did three initial core samples and sent them to the engineer. And during progression, we did another four core samples. And the core samples that we did originally, somehow we didn't hit that unconsolidated layer, nor did we hit any rebar. And these are, the, these are the core sample areas that we, uh, we took. And these were all requested by the engineer. And I want to point out one more time, we did core sample this before we started to see. And we thought we had a reflective you know, core sample of the whole floor. We were wrong. Um, I don't know how to do this. Um, let's see if it'll work. Maybe not. Do you know how to play the? video on here. Can you do it from there? So this was more disturbing. So we're four inches down and this is this wear layer, this, this particular layer unconsolidated and it was not adhered to the under slab. So the slab you're looking at now under it is the actual structural slab. So there were literally three pores on top of this that were never documented. But that's I mean, that guy is just moving, you know, a couple hundred pounds of concrete with a small bar without really a lot of effort. And a good portion of that floor came up that way. So the decision was made to go ahead and start taking sections out 
and we did not want them driving on this floor. Um, so they became rather ingenious. There's one of the sections you can see we were looking at four and a half. We ended up with almost eight, and that varies. So these guys were very ingenious, and because we wouldn't allow them to put machinery on there, they developed a jig, and they hauled these slabs out of there after cutting them with a pallet jack and a ramp. Um, and I'll try to show you. So here is the different depths you have from the garage doors. You have anywhere from seven to eight inches that we're re-pouring at this time with the new fly ash uh, silica fume uh, mixture that in three or four days, I think it was four day break, is already at 5,000. We're shooting for 7,000. If it's at 5,000 at four days, we're probably looking at getting about 10,000 PSI on this concrete. So it's some of the strongest concrete that Brecken has ever made. And the, the, uh, on the right is your uh, finished layout and grid and ready to, ready to pour. Again, here's some more demolition photos. This is, I put this in because this is Amy's favorite picture. We were hoping there were like dinosaur tracks, but instead there's just footprints. Some with a very large size 14 shoe worked on that job. Um, this is their screed uh, that they'll be using. So the screed itself is not the thickness of the mud. The screed is the top of where they're going to put their power screed. And if you look in the background on that photograph, they do have their power screed sitting there. Um, I'm actually quite excited to watch this thing work. I've never seen an automated one like that. And they also are going to finish with a power trowel. Um, I also wanted to show you that we change order one was the alley. So the alley is where the trucks back in to receive the uh, bales. And the picture on the left is how that holds water and all of the leachate and goo coming out of the, the belt, uh, the press. And the picture on the right is just taken today. And that has been jackhammered out and poured and the water now runs to the drain like it's supposed to. And I know for the years that I've worked out there, there was always four inches of smelly, gooey water in there going to the uh, uh, solid separation vault. Um, if you've got specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. But this is kind of why we're, why we're here, why we're asking for this change order. Any questions? Amy, any other comments you want to make? No, I think there's a clear need for change order two because of the unanticipated conditions we found as we took off that floor. So um, I'm hoping that that part is a no-brainer. When I sat on the assembly, there was a um, issue that we had with procurement in which the manager at the time made a decision to not bring it to the assembly and it had to do with a local preference option um, and it was a part of the code that had never been updated and it was just a loophole and the manager at that time made the decision without bringing it to the assembly. I'm just choosing to do the opposite of that. Um, I think that the attorney agrees with me and there's several different people who are like, yeah, you can sign that as defensible. But then when I had our new DPO review it, he agreed with me that the, it's just not clear. Um, Mayor Arndt had an idea of what the intent of our code section was. It's hard to make a decision off intent that happened in fiscal year 2019 versus what the actual paper said. So um, I just wanted the assembly to take a look at the code, um, see what you thought it said, um, and then I'm asking permission to sign for change order two so that work or that work can continue But also I'm asking for someone to take a look at that code and possibly change the code. So when we're moving forward, we have uh, a clear Direction on what the manager is allowed to sign and not allowed to sign for Amy a question for you is um, There's going to be additional Charges because of the crew leaving and the crew coming back on there I'm not seeing that listed. I don't there. believe that they are charging us any extra for that. The change order that we have, um, our project manager asked specifically about the MOB remob, um, and they said it was included. That is accurate. And I spoke with uh, Lucky, the, their foreman. Lucky. Lucky. Um, and he said, no, there is no additional cost for this travel. They'll be here the third or the fourth. Means they anticipated problems. Thank you. 
Any other questions or discussion? Ryan. Uh, just for the assembly's situational awareness, I have already filed a yellow sheet with the clerk's office to revise the code that does bring us here today. Any other? Jared. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, thanks, Amy, for the, uh, um, for the, for the rundown. Uh, the, the code is, yeah, it's, it's um, very ambiguous. It, um, I, I think in the end I agree with the attorney, but for, I, I read the code in, in different ways, but we came to the same conclusion, I think, in a way. For me, it, um, the, uh, the code in this instance, there's a, there's a, uh, there are two thresholds. There's the 10% for the overall project um, budget, and then there's the, um, that governs, you know, whether the total project budget is, is still valid. And, and whether assembly approval is needed for the overall, overall project. The 5% threshold governs whether right, the manager has the authority to approve a single or cumulative change orders. And that's where the confusing part is. It's very ambiguous um, about if these are um, individual change orders or if this is an aggregate right, of change orders that exceed the, uh, uh, the 5%. So my recommendation was um, one, yes, seek, seek legal, but um, in today's special meeting, we just go ahead and establish a precedent for now while we work through um, code changes um, as, as, as much as that helps. So um, I would be yeah, supporting this motion for that reason. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote on the motion, please. Mr. Ames? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Ledoux? Yes. Mr. Sherritt? Yes. Mr. Smiley? Yes. Would anyone like to change their vote? Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. All in those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all.